to tie better flies faster with the Norvice fly tying system. Let's take a little closer look at this business of uh, putting on hackle. Uh, I've set a fairly large hook in here. I'd like to take a moment to explain how we do things a little bit differently with a Norvice system than a conventional vise. Let's start out by uh, putting some body material on here. I'll just use some of this uh, bright orange dubbing uh, so that we have a little better contrast to see what's happening with our hackle. So we'll spin on a little bit of dubbing. Sure like to do this part. It works so neat. Pull this off of here now and I'll just roll that on. And this will give us a base for that hackle feather to bite into. Now traditionally, uh, I'm going to use a uh, saddle hackle here to begin with. The traditional way of hackling is where we take the feather and essentially wrap it around the hook. And this is the way you'd be doing it with a stationary vise. We would be wrapping this feather hand over hand like this. And of course with the Norvice system, what you want to do is put your bobbin on the thread post, hold the feather, and turn the hook. This is much easier. You can see how precise you can lay that hackle in there. Now sure, you can lock it and go back to doing it hand over hand. We can also take it off of here just as easy as we put it on. If you had wings on there, you'd very carefully take a couple turns in back of your wings, go through them, a couple turns in front, and that's how you do your dry fly hackles. When you're palmering, I'm a strong advocate of palmering from the front. Now there's a couple reasons for this. One is, if you have a, a traditional palmered hackle, something like this, and it doesn't matter whether you start at the front or you start at the back, but that puts a spiral of hackle from one end of the fly to the other, when we're casting or pulling that fly through the water, that spiral of hackle is going to work just like turbine blades. That's what twists up our leader. Now the way to beat that is you put one spiral this way, turn, and one spiral back that way. Now it's like counter-rotating propellers and your leader won't twist. Try it, it really works. Okay? We can also reinforce the hackle. This works pretty good on big flies. Little bitty flies, it's really not necessary. But, but spinning the thread and the hackle together, you'll come up with a creation that's absolutely bulletproof. Do it like that, you'll be able to pull pieces out. It doesn't come undone. Now this is a better way to do it. It really is. Now let's take a look at how we might do uh, a soft hackle or the type of hackle that we're going to use on a wet fly little bit different proposition. Uh, again, I use a fairly large hook in here. It's a little bit easier to demonstrate with. And um, we'll put uh, a little bright colored dubbing on the hook again. Not much to do in that. And I just run that out about like so. That ought to work just fine. Get the back of the hook here. Oops bring it forward. That'll work. I'm going to use a, a soft hen hackle here. I'll take one fairly good size one so it's easy to see. Yeah, it looks just right. Come back and preen those feathers up a little bit. Trim it to length. Get a bit of a bare stem there so we can get a wrap or two before it starts be sure to leave a little bit of room in front to finish off your head. Now because this feather is kind of short, I'm going to use my hackle pliers here again. Put our bobbin on the thread post and we're going to make several turns with this. Back like that. And I like to start at the back and then come forward through the hackle and finish in front. And like this. Tie it off with a couple turns. Okay. Now here where we live in the Northwest, we tie a lot of uh, wet flies and streamer patterns. And we like to bend our hackle back. So I just use my fingers like this. I'll lay it back and then wrap back over it. It's pretty easy to do. Use the vise to finish up your head like so. 
whip finish over the top of it. So you can get a nice angle to your feather. You can see how it slopes back at about a 45 degree. Gives you pretty good action on it. Now, of course, with a lot of flies, you're just going to take one turn or two or three turns, whatever the pattern dictates. But that's basically the operation. Let's take a look now at how we might do a parachute hackle. I'm going to place a smaller hook in here, something uh, typical of what we might use for a moderate sized dry fly. I like to start out by putting on my post, uh, the very first thing, and uh, run that down a bit and come back, post up right about there. Use some polypropylene yarn, commonly used for this type of thing. Neat part is now we can see the doggone fly when it's on the water. So we'll take a lay in a little strip of poly yarn like so. Tie it in securely, get in front of it. Come around a couple turns like so to post up. Leave the thread in back of the post. We'll trim that off. I'm going to lay a little bit of dubbing on top of that so we can kind of see what's happening. So we'll take a spinner dubbing on it. This, by the way, shows you how you can dub in back of your wings like you might do on your small dry flies. It's uh, really no problem whatsoever. Okay. In front of like that. Okay, we ended up with the thread right in back of the post. We use a small dry fly hackle. I, I like to use little saddle hackles. They're a lot easier to handle. I don't have to use pliers. We'll tie this in. So, leave enough room that you can get around the post to start the hackle. And you're going to do this by hand, uh, pretty much the way you do now. Um, hold your post up, try to get each wrap underneath the previous one. Three or four turns, like so. And we bring our thread over that hackle, work it in like that. And I use a ballpoint pen here as a half hitch tool to secure that. And then we can come and trim out our quill. You can trim off your post. I normally finish this thing off with a series of half hitches. You might put some dubbing in front of that. But that's pretty much the way I do it, and it seems to work pretty well for me. Kind of neat, huh?